<laughs> Check out this house, y'all. We got a really cool build show for you today. I got invited to see this house that's just getting unveiled to the public. This is called House Zero for my friends at Icon. Now this is a 3D printed house and we've seen some 3D printed houses before, but this is like none other that I've seen. This is obviously not affordable housing. This is not a charity project. This is a gorgeous custom home designed by Lake Flato. This house has some things that I've never seen before and I think is gonna show off from what I hear the capabilities of 3D printing. And what if we designed a house with 3D printing in mind and got rid of the standard notions of framed walls? And right away you can see when you pull up, look at these three sections of wall here that are curving and undulating and moving. They look like tree trunks almost. You've got this planter over here on the other side of the carport with all kinds of movement and cool stuff happening. This is a really neat house. But not only that, the beauty of the wood landing on top of the concrete, I'm super excited to get in and see what this looks like. We're gonna meet inside Jason, the CEO of Icon, who's gonna give us a tour. Today's build show all about a super custom 3D printed house. Let's get going. Oh man, Jason. Welcome to House Zero, Matt. Look at this place. Yeah, we're pretty proud of it. Thanks this for coming today. This is unbelievable, Jason. Yeah, it is, uh, it's the first of its kind. That's why we call it House Zero. So I said on the outside, what you guys told me ahead was that this, is, this house was actually designed for your technology. Meaning when Lake Flater, the architects, just said, all right, we're gonna build a really cool house they got rid of the constraints of regular, quote unquote, regular construction. What does that mean? Show me what that looks like. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, so far what we've been doing often is like appropriating the methods and processes and systems of conventional building. But of course those, those methods and processes were optimized for that way of building. And so sure. this house is um, the first house ever to be designed specifically to be built with a 3D printer. And so what that means that you'll see here in a minute as we walk around, the ability to change wall thicknesses without adding costs, so like very okay. easy to change the thickness of walls, very easy to add slopes, curves, and organic forms, often for aesthetic reasons, but yeah. often just as importantly, those shapes can add strength and can add energy performance to the house. Oh, yeah. uh, and then also to create these sort of like organic rounded spaces that allow you to like break up and create spaces within larger spaces. So those are, those are some of the things that you'll see as we kind of move through the house. But I think what you'll feel the whole time is like that stuff, usually feels very expensive and high end. Mm -hmm. And the big point to make is that with a 3D printer, you can have all of those things without any meaningful change in cost. That's wild. So for instance, these three kind of C shapes that we're seeing out front that, yes. that I kind of felt looked like a tree trunk growing yes, out of the ground. we call them tree walls. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that C shape actually is probably more structurally sound if the wind was howling at 150 miles an hour towards the house, That's right? exactly right. If you had a straight piece of paper and you just set it up, it would fall over. But if you took that piece of paper, it curved it or folded it a few times, you're not adding any reinforcement. You're not changing the properties of the material. Just the shape gives it structure. And so Wild. with a 3D printer, you can do the same thing with the building material. And then right here, you see, sort of see this moment where we're very purposefully showing off how thick these walls are. Wow, so, so these, is that the thickness of these exterior walls right here? Correct, and so these tree walls have an R value exceeding R40. They're like um, 20 or 25 inches thick, something like something that? Something like that, that's exactly right. Wow. So with conventional construction, this is like passive house level wall system. Uh huh. You would have to double or triple the amount of material in the wall, which double or triples the cost of delivering right. that wall. For us, you just have the printer run, you know, six, 12, 18 more inches, but the cost of adding this thickness to the wall is like a rounding error in the total cost of the home. And so you That's sort of wild. get, you get aesthetics, you get strength, you get energy performance very like inherently when you're using 3D printing. And so it seemed like a shame to leave all this on the table. And so this was the first project where we really tried to turn everything up to 11 and let 3D printing shine. <laughs> I so, love it. it Jason, this is gorgeous. I love the wood and the concrete elements. And as I walk into the space now, I can see the backside of all three of those main curves from the outside. And you can tell that thickness, like you mentioned. Yep, Look how exactly thick right. those walls are. Yep, and you can see that the way that like using curves and more organic forms allows you to like very elegantly create spaces within the spaces. Like when you're sort of in this dining area in the round, uh, it's sort of a, a nice cozy space mm -hmm. somehow in the middle of this very open floor plan. Yeah. Um, if you tried to do that with like hard, 
uh, rectilinear lines, mm -hmm. uh, it just wouldn't come off quite as well. And so just um, the overall feel, which is, of course, we're excited about building performance, speed, affordability, all the things that the, the technology enables. But it, it is important that people love being in 3D printed houses, yeah. if this is ever going to become a mainstream approach to building. And so for us, this house was a massive success, not only in all those other things, but like it feels great to it be does here. Feel great. Um, it feels cozy. It feels warm. It feels nice. Um, in fact, there's a lot of elements here that feel quite high end. Um, yeah, these floor to ceiling windows certainly do. I mean, we're going from the bottom of that beam, which is, it looks to me like your entire roof line in here is all timber frame, maybe some steel in there as well. Set on top of your walls, probably mm -hmm. structurally attached with Correct. some steel, I suspect. Correct. And then floor to ceiling windows. Is that purposeful as we think about these? Yeah, floor so to as we've windows? as we've built homes, we've realized it's much easier to deliver floor to ceiling windows almost by default for 3D printing. We don't have to stop the printer, we don't have to introduce a lintel in the middle of the print to carry on. And so floor to ceiling windows, as you might imagine, are more expensive, just the raw materials, but the labor to install them is like quite straightforward because we sort of we curve the walls in at mm -hmm. the fenestration moments, which means you sort of just the windows, there's not a specific spot. They just kind of go in until they set. Yeah. Um, and then it's quite easy to install. So it ended up being like very close to a wash cost wise, more for the material, less for the labor, but a much higher end feel. Mm -hmm. uh, it just like introducing that much natural light feels great to the home. And so I love um, the wood design too. That's with exactly the, right. You've got an inset kind of a, uh, a black line in there. I'm assuming there's some uh, trickery happening in there. That's exactly right. Some of the like the details to work out as we like move from like prototype to mainstream house is like how to interface with what now is like a very new approach to construction with the more traditional um, ways of building and finishing, right? Because yeah. we can't sort of, we're not in the position yet to like robotically automate everything. So right. thinking through those details is like quite important. And so this, there's this, still people involved. Correct. Still people in the loop. Yeah. Now these windows and the doors, they look like they might have been locally sourced, like that maybe aren't a national manufacturer. And so I'm suspecting maybe you had some local carpenters build these frames and then glaze them on site. Correct. We, correct? we framed and glazed on site. That was actually originally in response to like this sort of like the, the supply chain issues we're all dealing with. We oh, didn't yeah. have time to wait 16, 20, 24 sure. weeks for a window, but it ended up actually being more affordable to do it that way. That, wasn't, yeah. an, that wasn't initially our driver, I love but it, it turned out that we got these like very elegant windows. Um, and now when you buy just the glazing, a double or maybe even a triple glaze right. piece of yep. single glass mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. you can upgrade that glass to maybe a higher performance and not pay as much as from Correct. a Correct, so these are, these are double pane, low E windows, and then because they're floor to ceiling, we had to use a tempered glass, as you can imagine, that way when the yeah. toddlers are running, running hot through yeah. the house, they don't uh, destroy a window. Makes sense. Yep. Now, I'm not seeing anything at the, in, this, in these two rooms anyways, except Douglas fir, which is mm -hmm. gorgeous millwork, by the way. Yep. Uh, kudos to your carpentry and, uh, and construction team, beautiful yes. work and concrete, just two elements. Is there anything else in the house besides those two elements? We tried to keep the material palette as limited as possible because we really did want the hero of the show to be the 3D printing. Yeah. And so the, the 3D printing, we tried not to hide it, not to paint it, not to mask it in any way, let to let it stand on its own two legs. Of course you can finish it if you want, but we wanted to show you don't have to finish it. It can stand on its own two legs. And so um, that's mostly what's going on here is letting the 3D printing shine, choosing materials, very limited palette, materials that complement uh, the 3D printing itself, um, and keeping the house um, simple and focused in that way. So I, I, think, like I think the effect came off really, really nicely. We did, uh, I'll show you in a second, we did want to show the possibilities of finishing, and so we, we, we did that in the bathroom. So all the bathrooms do have a wall finish that's different from bathroom to bathroom, just to show, like, in case you want to, there are other ways to finish 3D printed walls. With that segue, let's go check out a bath. So Matt, right this way, you'll see our primary bathroom. As you enter the primary bedroom and the primary bathroom, there's this accent wall here, which is just sort of showing off the organic forms that <laughs> are made possible by 3D printing. But as we transition here, you'll see we did want to show in the house the different ways you can apply a finish to the wall. So we put a steel stop plate, but then just used a plaster finish that's waterproof, of course, and you get this very elegant sort of bath and shower in the round with the floor to ceiling windows that are frosted as we sort of talked about. I like it. This is a very cool experience as a space and it's a space that, you know, I won't say you can only create a space like this with 3D printing, but it's sort of very straightforward. And it lends create. itself to it, right? Correct, correct. So you what get I think is cool about this, Jason, is, you know, maybe you've got a $25 a square foot floor tile but this plaster was probably more like $10 a square foot to install. That's actually right. So in fact, this plaster is probably a less 
expensive choice, but it looks super rich and expensive in That's this exactly space. Right. And with these curved walls, you probably just plastered right on top of the concrete. Yeah, the, right? there's so much texture in the concrete that it can really bite. Uh, you don't need sort of all the extra like uh, prep coats because yeah. you can go sort of directly onto the beads and they hold up quite well. And the other thing I really like about this house is you know what? The house is concrete. So what if for some reason this plaster wasn't perfectly waterproof or failed, there's nothing to go wrong. Correct. <laughs> there's yeah, nothing the, to mold, is... to, to degrade, to decay, any of that kind of stuff. Yes, from a first principles perspective, concrete is inherently resilient. Whereas mm. like wood has, a, I mean, we love wood. You see it in this house. There's oh, a yeah. lot going for it. Um, but it wants to burn, it wants to be mold food, it wants to be termite food, it wants to conduct heat, and it wants to rot. And none of those things are true of concrete. And so there are a lot of these applications where like, just from a first principles perspective, we ought to be preferencing more resilient materials like concrete in the yeah. construction process. I love it. Beautiful uh, little Schluter drain right there, yeah. a little Kohler DTV system. The other thing that I noticed real quick before we finish up in this section is, I noticed on all of your walls that you didn't, I've seen in other of your projects, you put conduit in, you have common electrical boxes, but you went floor outlets in the whole house. Didn't yeah, you? that was a decision by the architect Lake Flato, reflecting back to us our own comments that we want the walls to be the heroes. And mm -hmm. so they, they wanted to just let the wall stand and not uh, interrupt them in any way. So of course we can put the conduit for electrical and plumbing and even HVAC systems into the walls. But on this particular project, we chose not to, just to let the walls be. So cool, man. I feel really privileged for you guys to invite me out to see this, Jason. You guys are doing NASA stuff. You're doing U.S. Army stuff. I, I suspect you'll be printing on Mars in another decade or so. These are the plans. Uh, yeah. And I suspect that there's probably a whole host of national builders that want to uh, use your technology. But to get the nerdy local guy out uh, with the Build Show fans, I really appreciate it, man. I appreciate you being here. So let's go meet your project manager. Yeah, uh, Kyler. What's Kyler. Yeah, let's go see And Kyler. let's talk some nerdy insulation and air sealing details. I'll Perfect. see you outside let's do with it. Kyler. Hey guys, I got me with me, Kyler. Kyler, you're really the builder on this job site. Talk to me about a couple of the details here, like specifically, how the heck do you insulate these buildings? Sure, uh, this is actually a mass wall construction, not all that different than what you've seen in the past with CMU block, things like that. We've just upped the ante on technology. Insulating it, since we've got an exterior print path, uh, all of these walls are constructed with an exterior bead and an interior bead. Okay. And so sometimes that's two layers inside, sometimes that's two layers outside, depending on uh, the setup. But then that allows for us to have a cavity inside with some structural columns here and there. Uh, but what that allows for us is to go in and fill that with uh, spray foam insulation. On this particular build, uh, we did open cell spray foam um, to an R25 value oh, wow. is what the overall performance is. Uh, the interesting thing is, uh, as you've seen, there's a lot of different features to this wall, not a lot of straight walls. And so in some areas, there's some wider spacing in there. And so at some locations throughout this house, you could even print and fill up to an R40 value. That's pretty wild. We didn't do that throughout, but you could. <laughs> yeah. Now, once we get up to the roof, though, you've got wood framing. You've got uh, looks like timber frame with some steel. What do you have going on for insulation up there? Yep, so up top, uh, over the footprint of the actual living surface, so we have a flat roof system uh, with a TPO roof. Um, over the footprint of the interior space, we actually did a rigid foam board, uh, four layers thick at 10 inches, oh, wow. uh, and some tapered insulation there to give us minimal slope to create that flat roof, um, but gave us up to an R38 value to meet code. That's awesome. Um, that's a great solid system. And that TPO is probably white, which is great for us down here in Texas as exactly. well, right? So we went with the white uh, in order to maximize uh, how much heat, heat we're reflecting and minimize uh, the thermal uh, properties. Smart. I like it. All right. So then let's start at the bottom then. We already talked about the walls. This looks like a typical slab on grade like we'd see in Texas. Is this just a flat slab? Yep. Very typical slab on grade that we do in this area. Uh, we'd used a lot of cur curved form work. We went in and did a little bit of CNC form work uh, or plywood um, in order to create some interesting shapes uh, to make it easier. Um, that was just something that we did. Um, but yeah, we did a pretty standard um, slab. The difference here is our exterior path. What we actually did was print with uh, pretty typical to what you'd see in a brick ledge, a okay. uh, masonry ledge. Yep. A and recess, so that, basically. Exactly, a recess for this exterior path so that any water moisture that got trapped, any moisture that rose up or seeped through, if it was possible, uh, would hit that and drop back out through the slab instead of uh, wicking in. So 
it's kind of an added measure just to make sure we didn't have any issues. Uh, and then additionally, on the exterior of the slab from top of grade below, uh, we did an underpinning exterior waterproofing membrane. Uh, so inside we have your typical vapor barriers. Yeah. Uh, on the exterior, we added that extra. And you're making sure nothing board. wicks up. Exactly. Now that floor that I saw in there looked like polished concrete, but that aggregate was so fine. That's Is that your structural slab? Uh, no, it's not. So what we actually did was a topping slab on top uh, of that. So it's a, a true SP uh, self-leveling uh, product. And so it's very similar. Um, you pour it in and it self-levels. Um, and then that gets that, allows you to choose different aggregate sizes. They have a lot of different products out there, a lot of different cool colors that you can work with. Yeah, I like that. Uh, versus your typical slab, if you came in and polished that uh, and finished that, you would see all different aggregate sizes, not a lot of pretty aggregates in there. Uh, this allows you to play with that. We went with like a salt and pepper finish. Um, and so a lot of very fine aggregates in there. Yeah, really nice. So between the concrete floors, the concrete walls, even yeah. the concrete countertops uh -huh. in the kitchen, you guys really stayed true to the Icon uh, brand, didn't right. you? Right, <laughs> we wanted to keep it pretty simple and go with tried and true materials and, uh, you know, really play up what we had. Kyle, you got a lot of smart people at Icon and some really cool tech, but it always comes down to a good, smart builder who gets the details. And I got I to gotta say, great job, man. I love the Thanks. details in this house. The shadow lines, the way that you put the boxes in the floor, um, all the wood and the millwork, gorgeous work. I think uh, one of my subs, David Betts, yeah. uh, at, uh, gosh, what's David's company? Benchmark. Benchmark uh, did a great job on some of the uh, cabinetry. Yeah. I loved how you even showed off the plywood edges in a few mm -hmm. places. Great, great job for you as a craftsman and as a builder. Yeah, Appreciate it, was, that. it was fun to work with that level of detailing um, because it presented a lot of challenges and required that level of craftsmanship that yeah. guys like Benchmark and some of our other trade partners, Petrified Designs, Curate, uh, that only that level of builder and uh, craftsman could accomplish. You did a great job, man. I'm really impressed. Yeah, thank you. All right, guys, if you want to see more of this house, there's actually going to be a tour of this house that you can get tickets to. I'll put a link in the description below to the Icon website. But huge thanks to those guys for allowing me this kind of sneak peek on this house that there, this is not for sale. This is gonna be, uh, for lack of a better term, a model home for them for some period of time in the future. And this definitely shows off their capability, their craftsmanship, uh, the ability to work with outside designers like Lake Flato that absolutely nailed this detail. Super, super fun. Now guys, if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. You know, you know we've got new content here every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Twitter or Instagram, otherwise we'll see you next time. Oh! buildshow.com